So recently, I've had a number of people ask me how to set up a mixer for live streaming on Twitch or really YouTube, anything that you can broadcast from. Or, of course, you can set up for just general purpose recording, such as for content creation or making music. But this is going to be more primarily for uh, live streaming and splitting, well, not necessarily splitting microphone audio, but uh, sending out a secondary output for your microphone for mixers that support it. So first up, I'm going to go through exactly what the mixer has and, you know, the general overview of your mixer, for those that don't know. And then we're going to get into how that's set up to your computer. So my mixer is the MG16XU. So right now, the only thing I've got enabled is my microphone, which is the RE20. And I'm going to explain everything in a single lane. So as you can see, this is the first lane. Uh, my microphone is connected via XLR. I have the high pass filter on both the mixer and my microphone. I have the gain set, which you can see hopefully here. I've got my compression and everything else set as well, which I'll get to. But first up, what is gain? Gain is the dynamic range of the pickup for your microphone. So what that means is at a low gain, it is less sensitive. It is going to pick up not as wide a range of noise and at higher uh, gain, it's going to pick up more noise and then in turn it's actually going to make things a little bit louder because it's letting in more noise that it can already hear. So what that means is if I do, you know, clicky noises like with my mouth, then if I turn that noise, if I turn that gain right up, you're going to hear all the saliva moving, all the tongue movements, whereas if it's down low, you're just going to hear the num, num, num noises, you're not going to hear anything real fancy. Um, I'm not going to do that because that's disgusting, but if you have a mixer or you have a interface with gain control, <laughs> go for it. Next up is compression. Compression is kind of the same thing. It compresses that dynamic range. So once you've got your audio signal, once you are talking, you know, right now I might be at, say, negative 20 decibels, I believe I'm, at, I'm sitting at because of my microphone. If I start yelling, I'm going to peak probably around negative 5, maybe 0. But if it gets too high, then that compression helps reduce that maximum peak and, of course, pushes up the lower. It's not going to save you at the end of the day. If you're yelling and screaming, you're not going to, you know, save yourself from distorting your audio if you do peak. But uh, it is helpful if you're a kind of person who goes from talking normally to yelling and, scream yelling and screaming. So it's very good in both music and live broadcast. Not necessarily useful in recording like I'm doing right now because I'm going to be talking at a general level. I'm not going to be going between quiet and very loud. Next up, you've got your EQs. If your mixer has EQ, I have uh, four knobs for my EQ because of my mixer. Most will have uh, generally three. You've got high mids and lows, but I've got a sweep for my mids. Uh, that I'm not really going to go into how to properly uh, set your EQ. That's that's a, that's a little bit more complicated. Next, you've got your auxiliary sends and your FX. Um, your FX send or your auxiliary send, depending on your mixer. I've got four auxiliary sends. Uh, next, you've got your uh, pan, or at the end, you've got balance, pan balance. You've got your on-off. If I turn that off, you're not going to hear me, so I can't really uh, play with that. And, of course, you've got your your uh, faders, or some some have knobs like this. Uh, I know if you get the uh, K versions of, say, the MG12XUK, rather than having faders, they have knobs, hence the K. It's a little bit more compact, too. You have less features. It's a little bit smaller, slimmer. It's good for streaming, anyway. So, you know, your fader is obviously going to adjust the uh, output volume, in the volume, the levels, uh, once you're done. So if I reduce this by 10 decibels, it's going to get really quiet. Whereas if I pump it by 10, it's going to get much louder. Um, but in turn, it's going to mess up all the ambient noise and, you know, all the noises you don't want to really hear anyway. So I've got everything else off at the moment. If you've got a big mixer, I highly recommend using, you know, uh, tape. <laughs> so, you know, you can see I've labeled my microphone, RE20, which is... Uh, whoop, here we go. And... I've got a game, which is my Nintendo Switch, music, which is a track I use either for Discord or for music, as it's labeled, which means it's separated from my desktop. So I'll get a little bit more into that uh, later on when I start talking about how to use Discord and send audio to Discord without everything else, which is very good for streaming. Then you've got RCA, which is 
uh, these ones up here. This is for my Nintendo 64, which I haven't connected yet. Or my, then we got USB, which is my desktop. As you can see, well, there it is. The knob is pressed in. Uh, sorry about the uh, really bad camera work. I'm using a GoPro on a bit of a, not even a gimbal, just a little hand holder. So it's kind of bad. Okay, so connecting this bad boy. Uh, one thing you'll notice before is I've got, uh, where is it? I've got my phantom power on. Uh, the reason for that is because I have, down there, I don't know if you can see it. I have a, a cloud lifter, CL1, for my microphone. It's clean at gain. <clears throat> you can't use it for every microphone. Uh, I only have it because my microphone's a very quiet microphone and a little bit more cleaner gain is very desirable. Uh, it's, just, it's just a gain booster. So for my mic, I don't need phantom power, but that device there does. So as you can see, I don't have a lot set up at the moment. Uh, I've only got my microphone, my switch, my, uh, my secondary computer output, which is my music and discord. And then I've got a blank at the moment. That one, last one, isn't for anything. It's going to be for uh, external devices, whether it be mobile, uh, music devices, etc. Um, but that's toggled off anyway. That's in the same lane as the uh, USB. So by pushing this button, well, right there, it's going to toggle that on and off. Okay, so the main thing you want to do is once you've got your mixer, once you want to set up your streaming setup with a mixer, you're going to want to focus on one thing, your mic. And that's what you're going to do first. That's your number one priority, your microphone. So once you've connected your mixer to the power source and you've flicked it on, connect your microphone, talk into it, and see if you can get this bad boy working. Depending on your uh, device, you're going to need to send it to the stereo mix, which is the master mix, which you can see there, the red knob. Um, you're not going to put the PFL on. I see a lot of people saying to use the PFL. PFL is pre-fader listen, which means if I lower this down and then I push this button, everything that's coming through will be the pre-fader, which means whatever the levels are without the fader control. So essentially it's going to be at zero. And that's bad because then you can't adjust whilst you're streaming. No matter what you do, it's going to come through at, you know, zero dB alteration or whatever you want to call it. Um, I do have other knobs for grouping. We're going to ignore that. Grouping is not necessary. Um, but yeah, you're going to want to put the stereo uh, switch on, the ST switch on for everything you're using. So for me, that's my RE20 uh, and all the other labeled devices. Um, except for RCA at the moment because I don't have anything plugged in there, so there's no point turning that on. So, once you've got that going, as you can see, as I'm talking, it's going to be uh, moving. So if I go, hello world, it's going to adjust for that. So once you've got that going, you know, you can try and, oop, try and connect it to P your PC. Uh, get something like Audacity open or Reaper, whatever your desired... Uh, tool is and just record see if you can get things working once you've got that working and you've got the basic setup then your next question is going to be well do I want to set up a uh, your 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 um, di uh, your desktop that's the word I was looking for your desktop audio your computer or your PC and that's pretty simple enough once your drivers are installed which you're going to want to Google you know for me it's mg16 XU drivers very hard install those um, and connect via the, if you've got the XU version, you can only do it with the XU versions of the, the model. The XU version has the FX module, as you can see here. Uh, you can see all the FX just there, 24 of them. Uh, it has the FX and it has the USB output on the back, which is the MIDI interface. It uses USB, t uh, USB type B to connect to the mixer and then just USB A to the, to the uh, PC, obviously. Uh, and what that means is you can then use this, hence I'm using for desktop recording. Uh, you don't, therefore, otherwise you'll have to use a line output and record via an auxiliary input on the computer, such as the line in or the mic in plug. So once you've done that, all you have to do is, so all you're going to do to get the 
mixer connected, once you've installed the drivers, is to right-click on your sounds, go to the Sounds tab. You're going to open up this window, click on Playback. Now, Playback is going to be what your desktop is listening to. And you're going to go over to the Recording tab. Then you're going to click on Line, and it's going to be the MGXU device. Uh, don't worry about this number beforehand. It's just, you know, however many times I've inserted that into a USB slot. This is the second USB s slot it's been used on. And you're going to set that as your default. Then when you come over to any other device, there's going to be default recording device. Of course, you can change it to anything if they've got custom settings. So that's as simple as connecting it to the computer. But then you might wonder, well, let's say you're streaming and you want to stream a game. You might have background music, you're going to have your microphone, and you might want to have uh, someone in Discord. Now, that's all easy. You're just going to capture the desktop audio if you're not doing anything fancy, because your desktop audio is going to have your game. It's going to have... So your game and your game audio is going to have your music. Of course, your mixer is going to have your microphones. So you don't have to worry about that. But then also coming through the desktop track is Discord. So that's easy enough. Now, I separate Discord, so I only have the game audio, and I used to have music, but I've removed that as well, so I've only got game audio. So if you want to separate Discord from your desktop audio, you're going to need to use a line. So for example, it's my music line here. As you can see, I've got a, it's two uh, quarter inch that connects to a single 3.5 millimeter auxiliary at the back of my computer, I think. Maybe it's the front, I don't know, it's somewhere. And then what you need to do is figure out what that is. I'm going to come down to your settings. So once you've opened up your Discord settings, you're going to go to your voice and video. Now, my input device, if you've set everything to default, you're going to have it look either like this or they're going to say actually default. So this is if you've got it set up like this, then you've got input and output device. So output is where the audio goes to. So that means if I'm talking on Discord, hello friend, if friend starts talking, this is going to go to the MGXU recording device, which is the USB, which is the USB portion of it. But I want it to go to music. So I need to figure out what music is. For me, that line is this one, speakers, real tech, high definition audio. And you can see that in your sound devices, if you go to uh, if you go to this one, Realtek, uh, nope, that's not it, this one, speakers, Realtek, high definition audio. Your input device is where it's recording from. So if both of these are MGXU, then it's going to be recording to your mixer, and it's going to come over here, and your mixer is going to say, oh, hello, there's a noise. And it's going to go back. Now, it's not going to pick up your microphone if your microphone's set up correctly, but it it can create a loop between your uh, friends. So you're going to end up with a friend talking, and then they're going to end up hearing themselves if it ends up going back. If that makes sense. That might be wrong. I think I've confused myself. But basically, you don't want these to be MGXU because you're going to end up recording. Your friend's going to end up hearing everything that's coming through your mixer, you, your game, your desktop, whatever, and then... Uh, you're going to end up recording the wrong stuff. So you want to have uh, it set up so that you've got... Uh, I can't go into this one yet. So you want this one to be its own line. Easy peasy. So the question is, how do you record... How do you record without recording everything else? That's That's kind of where I'm trying to get at without getting too explicitly into it right now. Because I just confused myself for a moment. So basically, if you want to record everything, uh, if you don't want to record everything, only want to record your mic, that's where the auxiliary sends come in, or the FX send for the lower uh, Yamaha models, such as the 12 and under, I think it is. Oh, the 12 might have a uh, auxiliary send, actually. I think it's got two. Mine has four. Uh, I only use one at the moment for this sort of stuff. Uh, I'm trying to get a second one working, but my computer doesn't want to. Uh, so... Basically, it's another knob, and I've got it up at the 12 o'clock position, and then on the master control, I've got it on the 12 o'clock position, as you can probably see. 
Now, what is this? What What is an auxiliary send? Auxiliary send, for example, if you're on a live stage performance, if you're the head mixer, you know, you're, you're, the, uh, you're the audio engineer, the musician is going to say, hey, I want to hear, you know, the, I want to hear the, uh, the lead and, you know, maybe the bass, whatever. They don't want to hear themselves. They don't want to hear themselves singing through the music, but they want to hear their band, maybe, for example. So what you can do is say, you know, this, if, if this is the, you know, uh, if auxiliary one is where I want to output it to, and if this one is the lead and this one is, you know, say the bass, then I'm going to turn them both on and I'm con going to connect the auxiliary one output, which is up there somewhere, to some speakers for the musician to hear. I'm going to turn that back off so I don't forget to turn it off later. So basically it's a secondary output. And of course, you've got four of those for this particular mixer. For the MG12 XU, you have two. For the XUK, you've only got one, and that's a FX send. It says FX send rather than auxiliary auxiliary send, aux send. Um, but they're the same thing, more or less. I, actually, I think they are exactly the same thing. I'm not too sure. I don't remember. Um, so yeah. So what you're going to do is for your microphone, if your mic is the only thing you want Discord to hear, all you have to do is come down to auxiliary one, which is here, and turn it on. Now note that these are a little bit janky. They, they're a little bit hard to set up. But I found if you put them both at 12 o'clock, if you put the lane at 12 o'clock and you put the master at 12 o'clock, it sounds good. Otherwise, if you play around with them too much, mine tend to peak. I think it's at negative six decibels and it just peaks. And I don't really understand why. Uh, but it, it does. And that, <laughs> you're going to have to play around with it. It takes a long time to play around with and figure that out but uh i did um so yeah uh then you're going to go to your auxiliary out and you're going to connect that to as i said to a plug which i said i had on my computer so rather than having so my desktop sorry my mixer is connected via usb whereas that auxiliary out is connected via via uh auxiliary so it's in the it's actually in the back i think it's in the uh line input which is the green plug, I think. So, uh, once you've got that set, then again, once you go into, uh, once you come into uh, Discord, you need to find that line, which I believe is uh, this one, line in, and that's Realtek high def, and because uh, Realtek, I believe, is the, the drivers, I'm not sure, I don't remember the computer side of it. And, yeah, that's it. So this is going to pick up. Input is what picks up and outputs where it sends to. So input is going to pick up the auxiliary send line. So the aux one output. And then the output device is going to send it either to your mixer or to an, to uh, to the mixer, uh, whatever line it is. So if you do the MGXU, it's going to send it to the USB lane or... If you do the uh, auxiliary output, it's going to send it to the auxiliary lane, which is the music lane on my mixer. As you can see, it's right there. It's the second one, the middle one. And of course, you can do that for music too. So if I close this and give you an example, just whatever, some wee music I've got going, if I was just to hit play, now you're not going to hear anything because... I have the lanes turned off, which is fair enough. That makes sense. So if I put faders down to zero and I go up to my music and I hit on, you can see there's nothing going other than my voice. But if I turn this up, right? Okay, you can't see anything because it's still really quiet. I didn't put it too high. I don't know how loud it's going to be. I'm going to turn it up and I'm going to edit it in post so it's not going to blow everyone's ears out. But uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look like this. Easy. Easy peasy. And, you know, it's the same for everything. You just turn on whatever you need as you need it or you turn it off whenever you don't need it. Uh, should be noted, if you're using the auxiliary... Uh, this is actually called the AUX Pre, by the way. Uh, this one's, uh, AUX 1 is Pre, uh, 2 is Pre by default, 3 is Pre, and I think AUX 4 is Post, I think? Uh, 
because that's FX. Pre means pre-fader. Oh, I'm not even holding the camera right. So pre is pre-fader, which remember the PFL switch? Basically the same thing. The fader doesn't affect anything. This is its own fader. And I think the 12 o'clock position is the 0 dB. Whoa, the 0 dB, which is where it's leveled at now. Which is why I say it gets a little bit janky when you play with it. And I think it's at negative 6 decibels. Actually, I think the output is plus 4 dB by the looks of it from what I see. So maybe that's why it, it peaks weirdly. But um, yeah, so the AUX Pre uh, is going to be the thing that adjusts the levels for the output. So that's pretty much the, the bare bone basics. Basics. It's kind of complicated, and I know I kind of fumbled the definition of especially connecting to Discord, because that's confusing. Getting ahead around outputs and inputs is weird, uh, especially when you're thinking about so many different things all at once. Um, but yes, that's pretty much the basics of setting it up. There's not too much you need to worry about when it comes to the lower end mixes that I want to get into. Um, so as I said, when you're using a mixer, you can use the MG12 uh, XU brand. I highly recommend anything being the XU version if you're going with uh, Yamaha, uh, just because it's got that MIDI interface and it's got FX, which are re really, really fun to play with. So for example, if I turn my FX lane on, I think it's working. Then, ooh, hello, this is odd. It's gonna do something like that, if it actually did anything. Otherwise, uh, <coughs> I'll just add post effects. Anyway, so yes, so when you're streaming, Know that, say I want to mute everything at once because I'm funky and I just, bam, lower that down to zero. I'm not going to do it because then you won't hear me. Anything going through your aux pre won't be muted. So if I turn this track off, by the way, aux pre will not be muted. So basically, that's very important to note because there's been a few times, you know, I've gone to the toilet or I've gone to get food or make a, uh, a cup of tea or coffee. And I've forgotten to turn that off. And then I go off and start like singing or screaming at the top of my lungs because I'm a mess, IRL. Then I come back, put my headphones on. My friend's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I go, whoopsies. Um, so yeah, that's very important to know. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Uh, keep your mixes clean. Keep your faders clean. If you've got a, you know, something to cover it, use a cloth to cover your mixer when you're not using it. Because cleaning out the faders is a nightmare. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, the recommended ones I would suggest mixes for streaming would be the Yamaha MG10XU or the Yamaha MG12XU. I have, I also have a uh, MG12XUK, which I'm trying to sell, but I, uh, that's the previous one I had. And the only reason I swapped was for some of the, uh, the other features this one has, which is the... Uh, more control over the EQing, it's got faders, the mute track, uh, the mute switch, which is the just the on-off switch, and especially the aux pre, um, the auxiliary sends, which mine only had one of, and it was kind of weird, I don't know why, I just couldn't get it to work on my old one. Probably because I'm silly, but it works now, so a better bing. That's just a very basic overview. I hope that helps some of you guys. I had like three different people messaged me on Reddit after I commented on someone's um, setup for help for this situation on how to set it up for Discord. But hopefully this helps. Don't forget if you're using OBS, Discord, whatever, don't just set it to default input output. Customize it so that it's input. So for example, on OBS, the input is going to be the XU uh in uh, driver, the uh, not driver, the uh, input in your settings. So it's going to be the MG XU. And when you're using Discord, don't leave it on default because if you've got your system settings to MG XU, then that's going to be the default. Make sure you change your settings in everything you need it to so that it always works. Because otherwise, if you change your system settings and you've still got something to default, one day you're going to be using your webcam or something by accident because Windows can be a bit janky at the best of times. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much everything. I hope that helps you guys. If there's anything I've missed, leave a comment and I will add any further explanation into the description. So if I've missed something, if I've missed something check the description. And I will be happy to get back to any of you guys in the comments.
uh, as soon as I can. So thank you guys, and I will, I will, I'll see you later. I don't know why I turned it on myself. I don't like myself. Uh, goodbye. Wow.